Hello and welcome to part one of the Edu Kingdom College explanation video for the 2023 Opportunity Class Reading Exam, containing solutions for questions 12 to 17. A copy of this paper can be found published on the New South Wales Education website, but please note that only questions 12 to 25 are available due to copyright restrictions. Scrolling down to question 12, we can see our first fill in the extract question here, the tawny frog mouth, the owl that isn't. With these types of questions, it's important to not skip directly to where the question starts and instead start from the title and finish your way to the bottom of the text and make sure you read the entire passage to get an understanding of what this text will be talking about. Moreover, it's important to recognise where in the passage and where in the paragraph the question starts. For example, if we look at question 12, this starts at the beginning of the paragraph, meaning we need to look at both the ending of the first paragraph and the second sentence of the second paragraph to make sure we know where question 12 will lie within this text. For question 13, this one is the second paragraph, second sentence of the third paragraph meaning we need to read the first sentence here, the first sentence of the third paragraph, as well as the third sentence of the third paragraph to understand what 13 will ask us about. For question 14, this one is in the middle of the entire paragraph, which means we might start by reading both the sentences in front of 14 and the sentences at the back to make sure that 14 joins those two different commentaries together. For question 15, quite similarly to 13, we might use the same thinking there, looking at the first sentence of that paragraph as well as the sentences after it. For question 16, it's just at the end there, so we're looking for 16 to be kind of a conclusive sentence that will join the entire paragraph together and give it an ending. For question 17, we'll look again at the thinking used for question 15 and 13, looking at the sentence in front of it and the sentence at the back. If we take a look at our options here from A to G, it's important to recognise that one of these options will not be used, so students may fall under the trap that all of them need to fit in somewhere, but if we scroll back up, it does say here that six sentences have been removed from the text, but there is one extra sentence which we do not need to use. To start this question off, we'll start again with the title and by reading our first paragraph. The tawny frog mouth, the owl that isn't. Australia is a land of iconic birds. Kookaburra, emu, budgie, sulphur-crested cockatoo, wedge-tailed eagle, galah. You'd never mistake one of these species for any of the others. One of our birds, though, is often confused with another type, the tawny frogmouth. Haunter of midnight letterboxes, maker of weird noises in the dark, possessor of a penetrating yellow-eyed stare, it's not an owl. By reading that first paragraph, we can understand that there's somewhat of a comedic and humorous tone used in this text. It's not as formal as some of the other texts we might come across, and there is an element of comedy here um, in describing this tawny frog mouth. Finishing off that paragraph leads into our answer for question 12. We don't know what 12 is yet, but we might continue reading this paragraph to see where, um, which of the options from A to G 12 might be. Fluffy feathers, check. Front facing giant eyes, check. Hooked raptor like beak, mostly hidden by tufts and whiskery bits, check. Nocturnal, spooky, silent flying, and maker of hooty type noises, all check. As you can see, there is a humorous tone there, um, and it's very casual, the language used. So, scrolling back down to our options, we're looking at something that kind of fits that humorous tone and doesn't really give us too much information or detail about the bird yet because we are still very early on in the passage. So going through our options, option A has too much detail about insects um, and we haven't really touched upon owls too much to comment on that. For B, um, it's talking about the habitat of the bird, which we haven't again, that's too much detail to go into at the beginning. C again, too much detail talking about the species and adaptations. D talks about the appearance, and it could be this one actually, because it says looking more like a cartoon character than a real animal, and it does link back to the eyes and the stare, so D is a potential answer. If we look at E, 
for comparison, if this ever happened to you, we don't know what that thing is that's happening yet, so it's not going to be E. And F could again be the answer because of that casual and kind of funny tone used for F. G again would not be the answer. So looking through D and F, I might scroll back up and see what might fit in best. So the tawny frogmouth haunter of midnight letterboxes, and then we've got 12, and then it says fluffy feathers, check. The best answer for 12 would actually be F, because if we look at the ending line of the first paragraph there, is not an owl. Not that we blame anyone for making that mistake. So F is the best answer because it links in um, flowing off from that first paragraph by saying that it's not an owl, but they don't blame anyone for making that mistake of confusing the owl and the tawny frog mouth. Moving on to question 13, if we read just the sentence before it, it says, in fact, the frog mouth is a type of nightjar something. However, it's not that straightforward. Confusingly, strigodes, the scientific name for the species, means owl form. I'll stop there and we can scroll down and look at which answer might best fit that this frog mouth is a type of nightjar. So looking at our answers, we don't see the word nightjar anywhere there, so we might scroll back up to get some more information. Ah, and if we keep reading that paragraph, we actually see that they do talk about the feeding or the diet of this animal. So that second sentence there says, third sentence, sorry, says they will eat baby mice if offered them by wildlife carers. But even so, a frog mouth is not an owl. So there's two key words I need you to spot there. That's the true owl, the owl there, and also the feeding and what they actually eat. So that means our best answer for 13 is A. So it's all about looking for keywords in the sentences that follow and precede the blank that we're looking for. Um, so A is the best answer for 13 because it talks about the owls and what they eat. Looking at question 14, if we read these sentences before, during the day, frogmouths adopt a distinctly, distinctively stretched and thin posture with eyes closed or opened to the merest slit. They are impressively well camouflaged against any tree. So this one's talking about their appearance. So that's something to remember, talking about how they look. We've got our blank for 14, and then it says, you just never see them. You probably hear them though, making a deep oom, oom, oom in the late evening. Manage to get a torch on one, and the bird will just stare back at you, not moving, daring you to make the first move. So if we look at the first half of the paragraph, it's talking about how they look, and the latter half of the paragraph is also talking about how they look, but also giving us how they sound and how they react if we ever uh, interact with them. So looking at the best answer. We might actually look at where these birds live for this one. So for 14, it says they, they're up in any tree and we might see them. So we're looking for an option that talks about where a human might come across one of these birds and how they get the opportunity to interact with them. So if we look at where they live, option B does say particularly in agricultural areas. So this could be it. If we keep scrolling, we also have G. In any sizable garden, they there are almost certainly frog mouths around. So when trying to figure out if B or G is the better answer, we need to look at where a human, a human might more commonly interact with one of these birds. So we are more likely to see them in a garden. So that's why the best answer would be G, saying that um, in, any, they're all, in any garden, there would most likely be a tawny frog mouth. So 14, the best answer is G, because we're talking about where humans could see them. Moving on to question 15, the first half of this paragraph is talking about frog mouths living in a wide range of different habitats. Um, by reading the topic sentence, we understand that this entire paragraph will be about habitats, 
And if we read the sentence following 15, we see that it says, when it comes to extreme cold, frog mouths can enter a state known as torpor. And it's something to do with hibernation, but only lasts for a few hours rather than weeks. We'll scroll back down and look at something to do with the, um, with the bird species. So I'll scroll back up. We're talking about temperature. We're looking at where they live. And we're getting some really detailed information about this bird. So in my options, I will be looking for the most detailed option. Um, we've already selected A. B does talk about the habitat, but it's not very detailed. C could be the answer because it's really providing some information about using their wide mouths as radiators and also touching upon their adaptations. D isn't just about the appearance, so it's probably not going to be D. Um, and E could be the answer as well, because of how much detail it gives us. So when deciding if it's C or E, that's the best answer. I might scroll back up here. And we can see that there's something to do with temperature. So that's an adaptation. But we don't want to select E yet because E falls later in this paragraph. So E could be 16. So this paragraph, this entire paragraph containing both 15 and 16, goes into great detail about this bird and its different adaptations. So we know that 15 and 16 are either going to be C or G, sorry, C or E, but we don't know in which, op which order that will be in. So it makes more sense to decide that 15 is C and 16 is E based on which halves of the paragraph talk about different things. So the first half of the paragraph containing 15 talks about the bird's adaptations in general. So that's where we can talk about the mouth um, and how it's used as a radiator. Radiators to, um, are to do with heat generation, so that's where that comes in. Um, and 16 kind of sums up the commentary on the bird's um, bird's ability to handle temperature. So because it's a linking sentence, we want to link the topic, link the hypothermia and the temperature to something else. So what E does is it links the bird to human's hypothermia. So that's how we know it's a linking sentence, making sure that Question 15 is C and 16 is E. Moving on to question 17, we only have a few options left, so it is worthwhile to see which two we do have left to use. Um, we have D left as an option for us, and we also have B as well. So B talks about frog mouths playing an important role in the native habitat, particularly, particularly in agricultural areas where D talks about looking more like a cartoon character than a real animal, and it gives us some um, information on its appearance. So we might scroll back up and look at the sentence after it to see that it's talking about exaggerated features. So if we're deciding between B and D and looking for exaggerated features such as eyes and an oversized mouth, exaggerated means um, making something look more than it is or less than it is, um, so D would be our best answer for 17 because it's talking about the appearance of the animal and how these features, the eyes and the mouth, are exaggerated. So with these questions, again, it's important to first really read that opening paragraph and title to understand what the text will be about, and then to make sure that when answering each question, we look at whether the blank is at the front of the sentence and the front of the paragraph, or whether the blank is in the middle of the paragraph, or whether the blank is at the end of the paragraph. Because if they're at the front, it will be our topic sentence. In the middle would be a joining sentence combining different parts of the paragraph. And at the end would mean it's a linking sentence, which really links the topic talked about in the paragraph to something outside of the, um, the text, such as linking it to human populations or something similar to that. Um, so with that, we conclude part one of the Edu Kingdom College explanation video for the 2023 Opportunity Class Reading Exam. Um, please locate the second part of the video for work solutions to questions 18 to 25. Thank you.